We begin this hour with our series, Protecting the Planet, which explores environmental wonders, challenges, and solutions in a changing climate. Today, we're talking about swimming with jellyfish. Yeah, you heard that right, swimming with jellyfish, millions of them. It's something you can only do in a handful of places around the world. The Western Pacific Island nation of Palau is one of them. CBS Sunday morning correspondent Lee Cowan takes us on a breathtaking journey to an otherworldly destination called Jellyfish Lake. That is pretty. There's a story to be told of a place hidden in the rock islands of the Pacific nation of Palau. About lakes that harbor sea creatures locked in isolation since the last ice age. And if there's any place in the world you could experience a Jurassic Park moment like that, well, it would certainly be here. Hi, so nice to meet you. I'm Lee. Marine Lake researcher Gerda Awun studies those lakes for a living. And what a job it must be. This is her office. There are more than 50 marine lakes all throughout Palau, each with their own unique connection to the sea, either through cracks in the limestone or through tunnels underneath the water. But out of all those incredibly unique lakes, there's actually only one you can visit. It's in the middle of a small island, mm -hmm. hidden beyond a canopy of trees, impenetrable it seemed, until Gerda guided us to a footpath, winding up through the rainforest. Nothing good is gained without a little effort, right? Our yeah. first view of the lake came moments later. There it is. Oh, wow. Surrounded by mangrove trees, we were warned it's home to more than a few saltwater crocodiles. But those weren't what we came to see. These were millions of graceful gelatinous globs, some golden, some as translucent as a moonbeam, found nowhere else in the world. Welcome to Palau's Jellyfish Lake. Why here in this lake? Why here? Way back maybe 10, 20,000 years ago, this used to be just a dry depression. Mm -hmm. But when sea levels started to rise, they got trapped in here. And through time, they evolved to live in such an environment. These jellies get their energy much the way plants do, from the sun. They migrate with it east in the morning, west in the afternoon, every day. A gentle commute back and forth. It's only in this lake that they migrate. And why only in this lake? I don't know. In 2000, scientists estimated there were more than 30 million jellies just in this one lake, as thick as cauliflower soup. In 2016, however, something happened. They started dying, one after another after another, and Palau's most famous lake eventually became still. So how many were left? None. None? None. Scientists still don't know why. Drought, maybe, warmer temperatures. And it's not the only time they've disappeared, either. But the jellies have always rebounded. The lake now averages about five to seven million, making swimming interesting, to say the least. We were just about to dive in when this happened. A torrential tropical downpour. It's just the start of the rainy season here in Palau, but we've got to get wet anyway. Chris Bender, my producer, didn't really mean to follow me in. He led the way, camera and all. <laughs> no harm done. As quickly as it came, the storm passed. But there we were, which is when it dawned on the both of us. I'm in the middle of the lake, in the middle of Palau. There's crocodiles over there. There's crocodiles over there. There's jellyfish. Somewhere down there. What could go wrong? Jellyfish in general are a squishy mass of contradictions. While they have no brain, no organs, they're aware enough to sting. Box jellyfish can kill a person within minutes. But the inhabitants of Jellyfish Lake, we're told, are benign. Their sting would cause no more than mild discomfort, if we felt it at all. Still, your instincts tell you otherwise. They are beautiful, but so are a lot of things that can kill you. And it's impossible down here to maintain any personal space. They're everywhere. But any fear is soon replaced with an unexpected calm. The most relaxing feeling ever. 
it's so quiet, Everybody, everything's moving so slowly. We had this lake almost to ourselves, except for Aaron Yepes, who came all the way from Nashville for the experience. I would normally be scared, but nothing's going, I mean, they don't sting me, you know, I just touch them. <laughs> Abner Sanchez was just as enthusiastic. This is the place, Jellyfish Lake. You can't come. It's like going to Egypt and not seeing the pyramids. We're snorkeling because scuba diving isn't allowed. After about 45 feet, the lake turns into a layer of pink bacteria. And then below that is a poisonous layer of dissolved hydrogen sulfide gas. So what happens if you come in contact with that? You have two minutes until it gets into your bloodstream. It can kill you, yeah. It is a very primal place. You come away with the feeling that, sure, these jellies may not have a brain, but they may actually be smarter than we think. After all, they live a life far more orderly and far more peaceful than ours. For CBS Mornings, I'm Lee Cowan in Jellyfish Lake. I'm glad Lee took us there. I, I, yeah. Why? Because you won't? No, no, no. The stinging part, the part that if you go too deep and you have two minutes to live, Poisons. that part. But I do think it's so beautiful. Yeah. I do think it's really beautiful. It is quite majestic. I'm sorry. Would I'm you kidding. go? Would you go? Yeah, but I'm not getting in the water. I, oh. I, 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 you lost me at crocodiles. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. I'll yeah. do it. I'll join Lee. Never too late, 2024. Yeah. That was visually spectacular. It was. Come